What is up everybody? Chris from Team Aquascape. I'm here with Stanley Genetic from the Dirt Monkey YouTube channel and we're here to build a pond. Absolutely, so let's get going. Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, so you've met Stanley. Obviously, you know myself, but I also want to introduce two other gentlemen here. We've got Chris Wilson. What's up, bud? What's up? And then we have Tim, also from, from Dirt Monkey, right? Yeah, um, Dirt Monkey, Inc. Dirt Monkey, Inc. Chris, what the heck are we doing here? So this is one of the first steps. Dirt Monkey is going through the certification process. And Tim, you and I have been talking for a few months now. Oh, you came now. to the academy down in St. Charles, Illinois. We've been talking about a couple of months. And one of the greatest things that you can do on your way to become certified is actually live the aquascape lifestyle, right? And so when you live the aquascape lifestyle, you're able to sell the aquascape lifestyle because you can benefit from your own emotions and experiences and it's gonna help you better as a builder, as a designer, as a seller, and as a mentor for all your homeowners, you know, getting through this. So tell me what your thought process was. What was your biggest thing, your buy-in? What was your hitch to get a water feature finally? Yeah, I think in all honesty, all this is is practice. Before we can go out and do it in somebody else's backyard and get paid for it, yep. we've gotta be able to master yeah. the process right here. And the idea is, we've always said, hey, practice where it doesn't really count. So do it for your grandma, do it for your aunt, your aunt we're doing it in his backyard if he doesn't like it then we can perfect that and then bring that to a customer where we can feel comfortable then charging for it but not until that absolutely point. get some hand-on experience now artists right we work better by doing with our own two hands yep. right you're down in here we're getting our hands dirty that's the greatest thing that we can do for you is to help mentor you through that process it's been a four-year process it has I think since the first time we met in our sandbox or you were with Brian the first time weren't nope. you it was just me I just came down and I seen what you guys were doing and then and I realized that it was no good unless I had everybody else involved in the process mm -hmm. because I wasn't going to be the only one out there putting these ponds in. Yeah. Right? So I needed to be able to get the rest of my team in. So then I brought Tim down later and Tim and I went and we took a look at it. And then that's when we realized, yeah, there is more to this than what we really ever understood before. And to really do this right, I wanted to bring everybody that's going to be a key player inside of our organization out to mm -hmm. the site. And so what was that a couple months ago, Tim, we yep. went down? And then that's when we brought Alex and Blaine at the same time and we said, look, this is the new direction that we want to take because after doing all the analysis, we realized that the profit potential was the highest. He ain't getting any older or prettier and neither am I. So we needed to do something that was easier for us to be able to do it than building these PhD level monster retaining walls and something that we could take off into the sunset and keep going as mm -hmm. we got older. That's what led us to this point right now, which is our very first aquascape pond we've done ponds in the past farmer ponds for ducks mm -hmm. for the deer we haven't done it for the people sitting in their backyards that want to go out and enjoy it so it's a completely different mind frame i mean tim what was tell me about the first pond you did it was the yeah. ring of pearls the ring terrible. of pearls dug too deep of a hole and stacked it boulders too tall and it's not doesn't have a skimmer on it oh know? no it gets better than that it was a spewing <laughs> volcano and it took them three and a half days and it was like this big yeah it was like like and, and i'm like you're getting all the boulders in there I'm just sitting there shaking my head going, this doesn't make any sense. You can't make any money doing that. Right? Oh God, we lost mentality. our butt. I mean, so, that scared thank us from ponds right there. Thank you for making the investment in your team. It took you long enough. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I <laughs> was there four years but, ago. Hey. It was getting the rest of them to come <laughs> down and do it. Don't blame me. Don't yeah, blame me. So this is kind of like the passing of the torch, right? You're working on the business, not in it. Mm -hmm. You're working on the business. You're trying to lead a crew and stuff like that. So we're really excited to show you the 20 steps, the 20 products to put in an aquascape ecosystem. We're gonna simplify things. We're gonna keep it a kit size so we can get a good solid foundation underneath us. We'll help you build a sustainable business for years to come as the more and more you build. Man, I can't wait until you guys start cranking and rolling and then especially with the way social media is working to get to let people know the artistic side of water features on your channel. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. How long would you think this would have taken us if we had never gone through any training and we were gonna put in an eight by 11 pond, would you have even thought it feasible to do in one single no, day? No, I would give it probably about a week. 
Yep. I was going to say. Do you do you believe we can do it today? Yeah. After seeing being down to Illinois and yeah. Okay. After seeing it happen, I I was surprised the first time I saw it. I was like, there's no way. Uh -huh. You know. But then we did the three in the sandbox mm -hmm. in one day. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And but then the sandbox is cheating, so a lot of guys yeah. are like, no, there, that's <laughs> never the. You can never get that easy. You always digging. have. So we're out. We, we're, we're out in Tim's backyard. Chris and I have never failed at building a pond in a single day when we said we'll do it in a single day. So I don't plan on doing it here. That's with instructing you, taking the time to instruct right. you step by step to give you the details, the steps within the steps. But it's going to be simple. We're going to follow the plan, Stan. We're not going to deviate. It's the same thing that we've been doing since the early 90s. It's proven. Let's not change it. Let's get you guys into it and let's roll. I've had so many people say that because I've recommended the Academy to quite a few different yes, people. Yes, you have. Thank right? you. And I've had I've gotten the text message. It's changed my life. I had one guy who was flat broke and he said in one year he went from being flat broke and just plowing snow and living hand to mouth to doing $1.5 million in pond installs in one single year and it wasn't because of me it's because I just told him where to look for the answer and it was because of Greg and the Aquascape team actually teaching not just how to do it in the 20 steps but how to price it yep. how to sit down with the customer how to actually walk them through the entire it's everything it's just here's your business here's your franchise without a franchise fee totally. yep and that's we forever grateful for that like you and Greg out there and preaching the good word it's the simple philosophy we have educate everybody Rising tide Give it away. All ships, there it is. Right? Give it away. Build water features the correct way. It's uh, it's been proven. All right. Well, I got some water features to <laughs> build. Go. You guys can dock. I got stuff to do. Got Tim over here, who is going to be the lucky beneficiary of a new pond. Yep. Yep. The Aquascape lifestyle. So you guys already shipped the pond kits. It's kind of like unwrapping a Christmas present, right? This yep. has all the goodies to do the eight by 11 pond. What do we have in here, Chris? Yeah, so it's important, Tim, you got half the battle. You got all the material here, right? You got the pond kit. It's all here, ready to rock and roll. You have your pile of stone that's over here. And around the front, we have the gravel. The first thing you do as the 20 steps, 20 products roll out is we got to mark everything out but we want to start breaking this kit apart to just kind of lay things out for you and your team. So everything is in this box that you physically are going to be building with today. But this is the 20 products that we have in this box right here. We're not going to break them all down, but just kind of show you as we open things up, we're going to have our biological filter right over here. This is called our Biofall 1000. We got our filter media that goes in there. All of our important installation tools right here. What you're holding there, Tim, is a mechanical filter. This is our skimmer 400 and by mechanical what we mean is this is going to be your pump housing the pump's going to be hidden out of sight out of mind only when you need to get in there to clean up the debris from the leaves this is going to be skimming your entire pond stuff so that's your mechanical filter that you have there chris what do you got there just the component box for the skimmer this has the face plate which will actually maintain that top water draw the okay. skimming action you've got your pump right here it's an aqua surge 3000 we've got an automatic dosing system which is like that little iv drip for your pond that yep. gives it all the good stuff that it needs kind of like a multivitamin for you or i keep us nice and regular and operating at our prime position let's put it that way right all right you got a rock you got our check valve this is an easy plumbing fixture that connects your pipe to your pump inside your skimmer box they give you a, this cool hat that you can wear when you're done it's awesome <laughs> this is uh one of the coolest things that you're going to get as a contractor when you order the kits and you're installing it say mr and mrs jones at the end of the day and you're ready to plug it in you're kind of ready to show them what's going on well one final gift you're gonna give them comes in this kit right here it's the welcome to the aquascape lifestyle and you're gonna be living that but inside here this is an owner's manual basically on a usb stick we give them a cool coffee mug we give them their first round of treatment that goes inside the pond and then some other cards in there koi cards things like that to get them more interactive with the water feature to educate them so they're not left on an island and say okay nice it looks awesome at the end of the day and you leave this connects them even more so with the water feature so this is very important for you 
and Melissa. Yeah. Even though you're gonna be living with it every single day, you're gonna be learning from it every single day, it's still important, even as a professional, read the instructions. I know yep. as dudes, we don't like to. Just <laughs> figure it out. Do us a favor, get to know this intimately. So we'll put that off to the side. Last couple things in here are going to be our liner. This is our 45 mil EPDM. It's a 15 by 12. And the reason it's a 15 by 12 foot piece is because we are gonna go two foot deep. So that'll compensate for that two foot depth of shelves going down into the pond and back up out of the pond. We have our fabric here. This is going to go underneath our liner here, Tim. It serves a couple of purposes here. Obviously protects our liner from underneath. Back in the day, I can't even <clears throat> tell you what Greg Woodstock, the pond guy, used to collect to put as padding underneath the liner. He used to pillage garbage cans for like carpet and newspapers. Coming in with pea stained carpet didn't go over well. That was in the <laughs> early 90s, right? So we made it fast and efficient to put this stuff down. And then the last thing that you have there is that's the main artery, the main vein that it allows water to travel through from the pump to the filter from A to B. But yeah, that's all the components in the box. And if it's not in the box, you don't necessarily need it. But if you want to build an ecosystem pond and closed system using the Aquascape approach, everything in this box is exactly what you would need. So that's the cool part about it. It's a yeah. one-stop shop. It's slick. We ready for step one and that's marking out the pond. Let's do it. All right. teaching you guys the proper steps, right? To be yep. efficient. This is an educational day. This is about you guys getting in, Chris and I leading you, but very much educating you. So it becomes muscle memory. Every single pun you guys do has gotta be muscle memory, Mike. The one advice that I stand firm on, it is my mountain. Starting out with water features, just sell kits. Don't go crazy custom, right? Just burn this type of installation into your minds. That's how you will be able to progress year after year after year, you build a sustainable business. And every kit is custom, work of art, one of a kind creation. No two backyards are the same, no two houses are the same, no two rocks or anything's the same. You guys can still be creative, but what that does is it also sets you up success post insulation two, three, four years down the road with the maintenance side of the business, where you make a lot of maintenance money and servicing your clients and keeping them happy. And then you guys will evolve into what you see on Team Aquascape, the Brian and the Chris's and what they're doing in the big strap boulders. But my advice to you, let's understand this kit, let's progress and grow and just sell kits. It's easy to price out, calculate stone, determine man hours. The important thing is the kit's here, the rock's here, we're ready to rock and roll. We laid it out, we got our shape, and then we skid all the grass back and we just kinda mimic the shape again right here. Step two, what we're gonna do is position the filters. The why we position the filters right now like we did is so the crew understands where is the plumbing line gonna go? Where can we set wheelbarrows? Where is all this dirt gonna flip up and over? Do we have to steal some dirt down here because of the grade? But now you know the natural flow of how everything goes. This biological filter, why we turn it left or why we turn it right. We're gonna have the biological filter positioned in a way to serve the living area down here. And then the cool thing is we're gonna twist it and turn it and then have it face your home. You mentioned both of your offices are in the back side of the house right there. You know, you're gonna be on the phone you said with clients and you can zoom or you can FaceTime right then and there yep. and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you want a little inspiration? Look over my right shoulder here. Just all look right. what I get to live with and see and do all my paperwork with, right? Let's walk out there. Let's mark this out and let's start to hook up our plumbing and stuff like that and then trench our plumbing line coming around there.
really pleased with the progress. Chris is doing a fantastic job helping explain and teach these guys again. A couple of them have been to the Aquascape Hands-On Academy, but we've got a couple fresh faces. We've met Tim and Blaine and Stanley before, but he's got a couple new guys, which is really, really fun to explain the process, why we do the little things in between the steps that we do and the reasoning behind it. But we are in good shape. We are digging the second shelf of three shelves. We're gonna go down two foot depth and we should be done in the next 15 or 20 minutes with the digging. Then we get the fabric and liner in. And then the really, really fun part, which you guys all know is my favorite part, and that's rocking in the pond. building our retaining walls we have to bed the pipe we want to make sure that we have the pipe laying flat on the ground we got a nice surface for the pipe to rest on so we don't get any weird areas that are going to capture water so right now i'm digging the pipe for is this the overflow box that is the mechanical filter called the skimmer box this is the skimmer and that one is the overflow biological filter there your overflow is that second hole that we have in the back side of this box over here One's for our plumbing line that's gonna feed our waterfall. The other one is for when it rains, water's gonna fill up. It's gonna go through that excess hole, that second hole, and away from the pond. You want pond. this out of here? Cool. Yeah. Thank you. We'll get that out of there. See, I'm learning something new too. I love it. I like to go off of this screw right here, the first one down from the corner. First one down is where we want yeah. the water level, so that's wherever I set that is gonna determine. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is basically set that at like grade, like just to get it close, right? So that's gotta come down to here, just to kind of get it close, and then we'll, we'll check it one last time with the transit, okay. and then really laser it in. Chris, I noticed this slope right here. What's the reason for this? The reason for that is we wanted to get down to that two foot section, just to give a deep section for those fish to overwinter. And 24 inches in our Chicagoland area, as well as up here, is more than enough for those fish to overwinter, provided you leave a hole open in the ice. But the second reason for that is I want to create a collection area for all that dirty water when we do the spring cleanouts, that spring flush of the system. You pressure wash everything, all the rock gravel gets cleaned off on the surface, but all that sludge and buildup and all that detritus kind of all builds up, and then you want to flush it down to a low point where that cleanout pump sits, and then you can pump it out effectively. If you have multiple low spots, as you're rinsing down with your garden hose or your cleanout hose, whatever the case may be you've got dirty water going in multiple areas so we want to collect it all in one area so that's why i slope everything down to this corner so you drop the, the pump in there and then pump it all out from there making an effective efficient cleanup Excavation is complete. Next step, getting in our geotextile underlayment and then the liner. And then like I said earlier, the fun stuff. This is that woven geotextile that will help the ground breathe underneath the EPDM liner, but also give us a little bit of cheap insurance. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in and then the liner and then we're cruising, baby.
said, we were just about to the fun part and the time has arrived. We are now rocking in the pond. We just kind of talked through some of the basics when working with round stone, doing the setbacks, not stacking boulders on top of boulders, but in fact, stacking them behind as you're working your way up from the bottom. So we've got the guys over here, Tim, Blaine, Alec, are now gonna start rocking in the pond. We went through why we start at the bottom. Remember, it's that foundation of a house. You wanna make sure to build a nice solid foundation and then work your way up and out from there. So hopefully we can have this thing fill in by lunchtime. That's the goal. Uh, it always is on a one day project and uh, I think we're well on our way. Hey Chris, what do you think of uh, the rock selection we got out here? Love, 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 right? Small, medium, large. It looks like the great ratio. You followed the ratio. Now you went and picked these up, right? In your dump trailer. You're kind of able to see what he's loading in and you can kind of limit him wanting to push the edge of like beyond the 24 inch. Like if you look at this guy here, yeah. this is like a 24 to 30 inch. And if, you know, when you don't have machine out, you're kind of stuck to this of using a tree dolly cart We'll even use fabric, scrap pieces of fabric like I got over here. And so with that fabric, if we got twice the size here, I can roll this rock on top of that fabric. Each of us grab a corner and we can sling it up. Four of us can lift it on that fabric and get into position. But this is about maximizing the size that we can lift by hand. When you order your stone and you're getting it delivered in bulk, be kind of thorough with the guy who's delivering it or dropping it that you cannot use anything larger than this size boulder right here. So this is right here, perfect for this size. It's not too much, it's not too big. You can muscle it into place. This is perfect. 40 contractor professionally installed water feature. Eight by 11, 11 by 16. This is the absolute largest boulder I want you to use. Bigger is better, I get it, but let's not break ourselves, right? And then this size boulder can tend to just take over the size. lunch the pond is filling we had a very very quick lunch but now we are working on putting the overlap in we've got the bottom waterfalls built that's the one that's going to dump into the pond what we're doing now is we're gonna take this 10 by 10 liner and overlap it from our pond liner so I'm gonna wedge it back behind these boulders carve out where our next stream and waterfall section is going to be and then continue to rock our way up to the biofalls and then at that point we'll hook the liner up to the biofalls finish everything up and get rocking 